So I was out here riding around, little, as I call it, little black top therapy. Little just chance to unwind for a few minutes, had a little time this afternoon in between some stuff I was doing. And uh, some of it was some, some of the songs I was listening to, different stuff, kind of got me thinking again about something that really I think pretty much none of us actually think about in enough context, in enough amount. And that is, what are we living our lives for? More correctly, who are we living our lives for? Of course, that being ultimately surrendering to God's will, surrendering to what God has made us to do. That's a honestly something we can spend the rest of our lives focusing on and working on. But specifically, I got to thinking about something that happened. It was just about a year ago now. And um, it was a, a mentor of mine, a guy that had been in a lot of different lines of work, a lot of different business and industry and different things over the years, but also was a lay pastor, as they call it. A supply pastor filled in uh, when different preachers were out of town and so forth for many, many years. And the last few years of his life, a church actually had him as their pastor. And he passed away um, just last year. And his last sermon was actually, it was pretty amazing, was on Easter. Um, and he'd had some health issues and different stuff. He actually wasn't able to stand. He literally had to sit in a chair while they preached. But still, I mean, even sitting in a chair, he was a spiritual giant by every sense of the definition. And I'm looking down here. I got my New Testament. I'm trying to hold the phone and the New Testament sitting out here. Just stopped on the side of the road to, to record this. Hopefully it's not shaking too much. But I was thinking about, in particular, um, you know, how do we live a life that leaves a good legacy? Now, there's a lot of different definitions of what a good legacy is, but a biblical definition is really ultimately living for what God has made us to do, what God has made us to live for. And that got me thinking about 2 Timothy. Now, 2 Timothy was a letter wrote by Paul very near the end of his life. He was going before Nero because he'd appealed to Nero, and so um, or to Caesar. Nero was Caesar at the time, the leader of the Roman Empire. And so Paul was writing to Timothy. And 2 Timothy, if you look at First and 2 Timothy, little little side tangent, little trail here. If you look at both of them together, you can see Paul refers back to some of the things that he had told Timothy in the past, in 1 Timothy, when he gets to writing in 2 Timothy. And so to, to get to it here, he specifically uses this example of a soldier. And in chapter 2, he says, well, let me try to not shake there. Um, in chapter 2, uh, starting with verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's an encouragement. That's an admonishment right there in and of itself. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who should be able to teach others also. In other words, keep passing on the truth. Keep passing on the gospel. And then verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And it goes, Paul goes on to explain more and more of what he means. But I want to stop there and just kind of chew on that. Give us all a chance to chew on that there for a minute. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Now, does that mean that we, you know, we, we for lack of a better term, just throw everything away and, you know, become monks, basically? No, no. We have to be following God's lead. In other words, using what God has given us well and not becoming tangled up in living for the things here on earth, but rather keeping our focus on where we're going, on where God has taken us, where God is leading us. And so what it, with that then as backdrop, if you flip just a few verses down towards the end of the letter, verse 7. And this was why I was, or actually, we'll back up to uh, verse 6. This was why I was thinking about that guy that I mentioned last uh, about last year that passed away. Because this verse came to mind, this passage came to mind when he passed. Verse 6 of chapter 4. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, verse 8. 
There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And that right there, that's what we should be living for. Ultimately, not the commendation of the world, not the commendation of our friends. Even though if we have godly friends, that can be a big encouragement to us. There's nothing wrong with encouragement in this life coming from our fellow man, coming from our friends. But ultimately, what are we living for? Are we living to get stuff? Are we living to get praise and accolades? Or are we living to hear ultimately that well done, good and faithful servant that Paul was living for? there at the end of his life. So a few things to chew on here, a little little tailgate sermon. <laughs> like I said, I was out driving around here today. Pretty weather, definitely. Definitely a blessing on that, but a few things to chew on there.